Well, hello and welcome. This is the very first nomadic journalism webinar. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Josh Friedman. I come from Los Angeles, California, at least originally. And tonight I'm coming to you from Sofia, Bulgaria for now, as in just a matter of hours, I will be heading to London, and that's a little bit of a glimpse into my nomadic lifestyle, which we're going to be discussing on this webinar this evening. It is a pleasure to see your faces here. I'm going to just go over a little bit of logistics as we get started. So there is, for those of you who are new to Zoom, there is a chat box. You can leave your comments in the chat box, and you can also leave questions in the chat box and occasionally throughout my presentation I will be um, responding to some of your questions but then I'm also going to have a Q&A period that is going to be at the end of the presentation and I've already taken a couple questions or I've seen a couple questions that I've received on Facebook that were pretty good and I'm, I'll probably be discussing them later. Whoever has questions on the topics of travel, journalism, and international living, please feel free to leave those questions in the chat box and I will do my best to answer all of them. Unfortunately, we only have 40 minutes, so we're gonna have limited time on this broadcast, but I will do my best to answer everything that I can. And if I cannot get to them now, then we can be in touch after this Zoom call and another time after this webinar. Now, to really get you in the mood, to get you in the spirit of nomadic journalism, I'm going to call on a source of mind and a friend, too, who in the United States college baseball world is semi-renowned by the nickname Superman, or excuse me, super fan. He is a bit of a superman. His name is Keith Franklin. and he has a message for you that I'm going to share to you as I put him on the screen right now. Let's kick this off. Keith, what do you have to say? On this first ever nomadic journalistic webinar, we'll be given a passport for surviving away from the sterile confines of strip malls and fast food restaurants while faces and places known only in lore come to life and breathe and sink with you. The flesh from your back strain to its limits as the thought of world reporting sprouts wings of journalistic freedom from your spine. On Wednesday, November 15th, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Josh Friedman will be your guide on this amazing journey from cocoon to international assignment. Well, it is that time. It's, it's now 3.18 p.m. on Eastern United States Standard Time, if I have that correct. I hope the audio was loud enough for you to hear. If it wasn't, please someone type that in the chat. Keith is a master motivator. I am very shortly, I, I'll tell you a little bit more about the background. But what he was describing about that cocoon I remember being in that cocoon. Once upon a time, I was not a nomadic journalist. Once upon a time, I was just a journalist. I was just a local news reporter in Central California, beautiful, the beautiful Central Coast of California. And I was in that cocoon. I wanted to go out into the world. I wanted specifically to go back to Europe, which was a place that I was dying to explore both as a traveler and as a journalist. And I was stuck in that cocoon. And I hope that over the course of this webinar and thereafter, we will be breaking out of our cocoons and unleashing that freedom that Keith was talking about, that journalistic freedom to go out and explore the world. And oh, how rewarding do I find it. So who is this Keith Franklin? I was telling you that he is affectionately known in the United States college baseball world as superfan. 
Well, going back about how many years was this? Five years ago, something like that. Just for the heck of it, just because I could, I, I'm a baseball fan. I just decided why not have some fun and go cover some baseball games. And at the very first baseball game I showed up to as a journalist, there was this guy, Keith Franklin. I didn't even know his name at the time. I had never, I didn't even know what to expect. Lo and behold, there's this guy with the long hair waving it back and forth, nearly banging his head on the, the pole right behind home plate. And he, he rips off a rally fart. Have you ever heard of a rally fart? I didn't think so. But right before the sixth or seventh inning, he just farted really loud right after he said that he was going to unleash a rally fart. And what happened? His team rallied. They scored three runs and tied the game. And I thought, wow, no, this, this isn't your average fan. There is something to this guy. And I let it go. I paid attention to him over the course of the weekend. And after the three games were over, I decided to walk up to Tim and start a conversation. And found out a little bit about him. We might have exchanged contacts. We might not have. I don't even remember. And that was that. But then fast forward a year, and he was coming up to San Luis Obispo, where I was based at the time. And there, there was all this noise about him in the press box. Something had happened that made all these reporters and broadcasters, they, they were all talking about him. And lo and behold, I realized that his team, the, the University of California, Irvine, that baseball team had kicked him out of their stadium. They banned him from going to their games. They banned their biggest fan from going to their games. And I searched online. I tried to find some news articles. I didn't find anything about it. Basically, no one wanted to break the story. No one had the courage to break the story or no one won, had rapport with Keith Franklin. Well, I went up to him. We had a chat. He gave me some leads. I did some investigative work. That story came out. And then lo and behold, in the Daily Mail in the UK, they're talking about some baseball super fan and they're showing a soccer field because they don't even know what baseball is apparently at the Daily Mail. And, and then he's on the front page of the Wall Street Journal and, and the story just blew up. It's the only story that ever blew up my Twitter feed. My Twitter feed just lit up with all these baseball fanatics. And aside from the fact that Keith has turned out to be a friend and did me a favor with this introduction in order to get you hyped up for this webinar, aside from that, there's a lesson here. And it's a lesson that I've learned repeatedly and have repeatedly turned to over the course of my career in the media, as well as my life as a traveler, as an explorer, and everything that really makes up who I am. And that is that when there's some interesting person there, just standing there, sitting there, doing something, someone out there who's intriguing, when you see that person, do you go up to him and strike a conversation? Well, I've learned that I ought to. And that when you meet some random person one time, two times, three times, four times, maybe something doesn't happen. Maybe nothing happens. But eventually, if you, if you make a habit of reaching out to your fellow human beings, whether it be as a journalist developing sources, whether it be as a traveler who, lo and behold, is going to build these network of people that provide you accommodation, they let you into your homes, I mean, who, they let you stay with them, they become lifelong friends, who knows? But there are so many opportunities out there with other humans networking that's not just happening on social networks. And I have learned to seize those opportunities and I could not recommend any more so that you do that as well. Now, I'm sure some of you are interested in learning how I travel to 20 countries.
countries a year as a nomadic journalist, given that that is the title of this webinar. Well, actually tomorrow I'm gonna be, just, just hours from now, I will be landing in London, which will be not my 20th, but the UK that is, my, my 30th country of this year, 30th country of 2017. But looking back over the past three years, I on average have been in 20 or more countries each year. So in order to give you some insights into my mind and how I do what I do, I am going to let you take a look at my cheat sheet. That's right. I came up with a little bit of a formula explaining what it is that I do. And I'm going to share my screen once again as I discuss that with you. So there you go. <laughs> there are my notes. There are my, my cheat sheet. When, when I really think about how is it that I travel to 20 countries a year as a nomadic journalist, well, this is pretty much how it goes. First off, I set up remote work. I got things set up before I moved to Bulgaria so that I could be making money, not necessarily a lot of money, and I certainly was not at first and still to this day. I don't need that much money to live off of and travel. But I set things up so that I can, remote, I can work remotely. That is crucial so that you can be traveling to all these different countries and chasing news. The second point, I moved to a place that is inexpensive and has travel and reporting opportunities. Obviously that place is Sofia, Bulgaria, and it has many perks, despite uh, a lot of negativity that you might come across about Bulgaria in general. But uh, not delving into that, Bulgaria is very inexpensive place to live and oh my god, are, are there travel opportunities, which takes me into the, the third point here, which is that I book these cheap flights. How much do you think I'm paying for this flight that I'm taking to London in just a matter of hours? Anyone take a guess? 50. 50 what? 50 euros. 10 euros. I don't even know how many 10 euro flights I've had this year. I have had a bunch of 10 euro flights this year. It's amazing with being situated in Sofia and for that matter, you can, you can find them in a lot of places in Europe, Wizz Air, Ryanair, cheap flights. I seize these cheap flights to take me to places where there's breaking news. And then what do I do? I go cover that news regardless of whether or not I'm going to get paid for it. Now, I try to set things up so that I've sold a story in advance and that I'm going to be making money off of it, whether it's to a publication that I work for or something freelance. But I do it mostly out of the love for reporting, for chasing news, for exploring the world. Those are things that drive me and because of that it's allowed me to build up this body of work whether it be youtube videos news articles i've written blog posts that i've written and that body of work brings in interest from publishers employers basically people who want to pay me to produce journalism so there you go that's a look at my cheat sheet we're gonna hop on out of there so that you can see my face once again and I can see your faces too. Now I'm gonna very quickly tell you one story in the way of playing a video. It is a much different story than the first one. This is of a refugee who I came across at the Greek Macedonian border he was from Afghanistan, but he could speak Lithuanian. I filmed a video of him making a plea to the Lithuanian president, and 
this is what happened. So what do you guys think? Anyone want to? What's your name? My name is Basir. Whoa, sorry and about that. And you're from where? From Afghanistan. It was quite a story and it was an example of how I was leveraging social media. There, there's really just so much power that can come out of leveraging social media. The media has really been decentralized and that leaves an incredible amount of power in the hands of us, the individual. And Basir, the, the young man from Afghanistan who ended up in uh, going, going from being stuck, running away from the Taliban to then um, getting stuck on the Greek Macedonian border and then getting flown into uh, Vilnius, Lithuania, it was just a very touching story. And it's something that I'm never gonna forget and that I'm very grateful to have been a part of. Now, unfortunately, I seem to have mistimed this a little bit and I'm running short on time. So I'm gonna see if I could, no, I don't have time for that. So uh, if you would like to truly indulge in the nomadic journalism experience, then what I have created for you is what's called the Nomadic Journalism Academy. This is going to be an online course and coaching program in which I'm going to allow you to break out of your cocoon to go out into the world and whether you want to become a nomadic journalist, start a media business or just leverage social media to build up your own brand and your own business while you are traveling, then these programs that I'm creating within the Nomadic Journalism Academy are gonna teach you how to do exactly that. And the very first program that I have set up in this nomadic journalism academy is what is called the nomadic journalism adventure igniter and this is going to be a six-week course that is going to kick off next week and over the course of this course you're going to go from being in your cocoon to actually touching base or stepping foot in a new country whether, where you're gonna be doing reporting or putting out blogs, vlogs, social media posts to build up your brand, to build up your business, whatever you would like to do to leverage the media power that lies in your hands. And I will go over the six steps to this course with you 
They are one, what is the mission behind your mission? We're gonna figure out the driving force behind your nomadic journalism mission. The second step is gonna be zeroing in on your destination. Where are you gonna go in the world and why? What will be strategic about going there? And then I'm gonna ask you right away to book that trip, not to think about it very long. And we're gonna then launch a platform or platforms to get your messages, your reporting, whatever it is, the content you're producing to get that out into the world. And then we're gonna be learning how to cultivate leads and sources, and then finally setting foot in this new country and doing some actual on the ground reporting. And I'm very excited to be announcing this product, which you can find if you go to nomadicjournalism.com slash store, which I will drop the link in this chat right now. Anyone who would like to purchase the product in the next day will receive it at a significantly discounted price of only $27. That's it, just $27. That is an offer only for the people who are on this webinar and it's not gonna last long, it's only gonna last one day. And I'm very much looking forward to pouring my heart and soul into working with whoever the few students, or maybe more than that, who will be in this course, so that we can all actually realize our nomadic journalism dreams. Now, anyone who has questions, unfortunately, I only have three and a half minutes remaining. I mistimed this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take your questions, what I can get in right now, and then after this call ends in about three and a half minutes, I'm gonna do another Facebook Live in which I will answer however many questions you have until I need to pack and head to the airport to go to London. So if you have a question, please write it in the chat right now. I will start with the question that I received on Facebook, which was Aldo asking the top three countries to live based on which are cheapest and have the most interesting opportunities for journalism. Although what I would say is I would look to the region that I am most familiar with, which is of course Eastern Europe where I am at the moment. And if I were to zero in on a few countries, I would definitely look to Ukraine. Ukraine is incredibly cheap and there's a lot of news coming out of Ukraine all the time. Obviously everything having to do with Ukraine and Russia produces a whole lot of news. If you're in the capital Kiev, you're getting really an incredible deal where you get things to be very cheap and exciting. Elsewhere, I would look to the Balkans where I'm at right now, either Sofia, Bulgaria or Belgrade, Serbia, where you have access to like what I was describing, cheap flights, you name it. Now, unfortunately, I'm running out of time. So I'm just gonna say as one last bonus, if you're interested, if you're gonna pursue this opportunity to buy this program, the very first nomadic journalism adventure igniter, then you and I will be having a 15 minute or maybe it'll be a 15 hour Skype call in which we go over everything that we can do to realize your goals. Now, I'm gonna head over to Facebook Live. Thank you very much for joining me on this webinar. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to cut it off short but I will continue to answer all the questions you have on my Facebook Live as I think I'm gonna get cut off right about now from uh, Zoom. It's telling me I have less than a minute remaining. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna end this meeting right now and I will Facebook, yes, I gotta throw in the Facebook link. Um, there is the Facebook link. You can head over to that Facebook link where I'm gonna be going live and I will be responding to whatever your questions are, however long they may last.
So thank you very much for joining me on this webinar. I look forward to working with you, whether it be in the academy or whether we're just having a chat. Once again, thank you very much, and I hope you all blast out of your cocoon and into the world of nomadic journalism. So long for now. <laughs>